are doing the worst by protecting their children to the point where there's no harm that can come to them. Having said that, having said that, I'm not a parent. And a parent might say, how dare you say that because I don't want to risk my son or daughter's life. Well, they have a good point. I take these children home every day in a private coach and I'm only allowed to stop at a certain bus stop that their parents have agreed on. Now, that's good for your own child to feel safe, but that's unbelievably dangerous in terms of having them live in the world. But you're right that if you push it too far one way, you also risk your child being unnecessarily harmed. So it's that precarious balance between the two. I don't know, but I don't think it allows us to understand what really goes on in other countries. One of the disastrous consequences of the modern time is this idea of demonizing masculinity. Masculinity is a force. It's not a good force. It's not a bad force. It's a force. It is a force. And you see this happen with guys even from the age of 9, 10, 11, 12. Sisters will say, my brother's so annoying. He always does these stupid things. What the brothers are doing are pushing the boundaries, pushing the limits. It's something within a lot of guys where they have to push boundaries. They have to explore. They have to compete. If channeled in the right way, it can become amazing. This is why in so many competitive domains, even mathematics, yes, you're going to get awesome women. Absolutely. You do see it a lot in boys where they want to jump the fence. They want to like this alpha nature that predates us as being humans. These of things if channeled in the right way can become an amazing force we can channel them to be astronauts to be engineers to be car racing drivers that can help help advance engineering because a lot of the push for advanced engineering and technology comes from racing and things like that the idea of being a strong family these are traits which can be toxic if put the wrong way if you have a guy that you don't train to focus their energy they could develop uncontrolled unfettered masculine energy, if you want to call it that. And obviously it's in women too. Tell you what happened yesterday. I had these guys on my bus. It was the last day of school and they absolutely wanted to jump off the bus and run off and go buy McDonald's. And I knew that there's no way I was allowed to do that. So in the end, I compromised with them and I pulled into the service station. So I knew that that way I was protecting them all. It was all camera, it was all security. I never took my eyes off him. It was all safe. It was off the highway. And yet it was an adventure for the boys and they needed that adventure. They celebrated guy solidarity. They were shaking hands they said to me they're going to miss me while they're on school holidays people say guys can't talk about emotions well they did but they had to go through this ritual this rite of passage and so it needs to be controlled but not not subjugated not suffocated not asphyxiated not ostracized it's very difficult to raise a guy in that sense i mean i don't know anything about raising women i just know as a guy you've got to appreciate their energy and have them respect you as an older rail model rail model rail model male, male role model in order to guide their energy to the right place so that they become better people so it's not that masculinity is toxic it's that we are training masculinity to become toxic and that's our fault we need to recognize that it's our fault as a society not keep blaming men in the same way that we don't blame immigrants we don't blame Islam why should we be blaming men it's masculinity is part of the problem it's also part of the solution meaning comes after the action and I say this to everybody action comes first you have to act as if the meaning exists now I didn't want to learn French I just went to the class because my ex-fiance was learning so I went with her and after the first week I was already able to speak French with the teacher and so they moved me up and up and up and up and then I became a teacher at the school after a few weeks of learning French the point is I would never have known that and would never be able to share that with you if I just didn't go and do that so do something don't sit at home and wait it will not come to you check with other people that doesn't mean go do stupid stuff I used to race sport bikes the boys hated losing to you yeah Miss Fransman that's awesome my type of girl <laughs> all right they say that Silicon Valley is not good to women because it's built by boys in their college dorms <laughs> you know how to prove that wrong women go down there and kick ass Make your own Silicon Valley. Just don't call it Silicon Valley because for women that might have a different meaning. Uh, Medellin, that sounds like it's from Colombia. Medellin has two L's, I think, because double L in Spanish makes a J sound in Colombia and in Span in Spain it makes a Y sound just like in France. I want to look up the Arabic derivative of Medellin because I know, for example, like al Kala is a Spanish name, but it comes from the Arabic al Kala. A huge amount of Spanish is from Arabic because for most of Spain's existence after the Roman Empire up until the 20th century, no, about a third of its existence was Arabic. That's why they music is so similar to Arabic music. This is an Arabic song, but you'll think it's Spanish. Yes, man. You hear the strings. <laughs> Enamorada, enamorada 